You ever come across somebody that won't reveal their secret bag of tricks? Maybe they're afraid you'll gain an unfair advantage. Well, there's no snobs here. You're gonna get the five hacks every beginner should know to get a cinema quality look in DaVinci Resolve. Got banding from 8-bit video? Smoothed. Log footage without slapping on a LUT? BAM! Uneven skin tones? Beautified. Flickering video? That's a problem of the past. Confused by color wheels or curves? Just point click and drag. You may or may not have ever reached into the bag of tricks found in the open effects tab, but here are the five open effects hacks every beginner should know. Number one, D-band. Now, we're not talking about breaking up a band, but how we address banding issues or the blocky, chunky effect that we sometimes see in 8-bit video. This usually manifests itself in skies where we have a gradient and there's not enough detail or there's missing colors, and so we see these large steps of gradation. While there isn't a perfect solution, the D-band effect can make it less obvious. This is how to use it. We first need to qualify or mask the sky. Then apply the D-band effect. From here, just adjust the settings to set the strength of the effect depending upon the clip. If at some point you go too far, you can always dial it back with a global blend slider. Number two, color space transform. For dealing with log to rec 709 conversion, rather than using a LUT that crimps the signal, making it impossible to recover highlight detail and dynamic range, a better way to address log footage is with the color space transform. On these clips from an Arri Alexa camera, we'll add the color space transform to this shot, set the input color space to Arri Alexa, input gamma to Arri Log C, since we know that's what we have, and boom. We get better tone mapping with the ability to fine tune and we're not losing any detail in the shadows or highlights if say we want to recover them later. Of course this doesn't mean you won't need to perform manual corrections like fixing exposure and color balance issues, but this will give you a better start and I suggest reaching for this the next time you consider using a LUT. Plus, if you need to match multiple different cameras together, this is the best way to do it. For example, if say you have red footage that you want to match with the Arri Alexa footage or vice versa, just simply choose the input color space, in this case, red wide gamma RGB, gamma red log 3G10, and set the output color space to Arri Alexa and gamma to Arri log C. With this, the red footage is mapped to the same Alexa color space and should make it much easier for matching. Just make sure to then add a second instance to transform Alexa Log C to Rec 709. Number three, color compressor. What color compressor does is it changes the hue, saturation, and luminance of your image to match a target color that you choose. For instance, if I choose green and move the compress hue slider, You'll see how it's pushing all the hues towards green until it reaches a point where the whole image matches the green hue. And moving the saturation and luminance sliders, we reach a point where the whole image turns into a solid green, that green we picked. Okay, cool, but how's that useful? In a real life situation, if you've got to fix uneven skin with reddish or yellow areas or even dark eye bags, you can qualify the skin and apply the color compressor. Then use the eyedropper to pick a color in the skin that has the better looking hue, saturation, and luminance around here. Now as I begin to move the hue slider to the right, all those other hues begin to disappear and the skin becomes more even. Now we don't want to go too far to the right because that'll make it look unnatural. The effect works better if we just add a little. The same goes for the saturation and luminance sliders. Let's see the before and after. Clear, even skin in just a few seconds. Number four, deflicker. Another common problem you may find is flickering. If the camera shutter speed or angle doesn't match with the frequency of fluorescent lighting, you get this flickering effect. With deflicker, this is a problem of the past. By default, it's set for fixing flicker issues related to time lapses, but for lighting, just switch to the floral light preset and it works wonders. If you're feeling adventurous, you can always jump into the advanced settings and play around with the parameters until you find that sweet spot. 
And number five, cinema grade. While this isn't a built-in effect, it does allow you to bypass confusing color wheels and curves to color grade right directly on the image. Just point over an area you want to change, click, and drag up or down to change it. You can use this to bring shadows up, brighten skin tones, you name it. Plus, you can use this tool in false color mode where red indicates blown out detail so you can drag down to recover highlights and correct skin tone exposure until they turn into gray, green, and pink colors. And instead of placing points on hue curves, you can click any area to change its hue, saturation, and luma. In addition, you get 90 built-in color looks and film stocks so you can find the right look for your project with even greater ease and simplicity to get a cinema quality look. So these are my top five open effects tools. If you like this topic, let me know so I can make a part two. There's so many useful open effects tools like dehaze, glow, lens flare, lens reflection, face refinement, dirt removal, the list goes on. If you'd like to try out Cinema Grade, I'll include a link for it in the description below. You can get a free seven day trial and 20% off your purchase for a limited time with coupon code YouTube. And if you want to go from beginner to pro in DaVinci Resolve, I want to extend an invite to our free one hour online color grading workshop where we dive into the fundamentals and where you'll get the kinds of tips and techniques that you don't normally see on YouTube. We'll have a special offer for our Color Grading Academy at the end for those who want to go further in their filmmaking. For more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to get notified of our next one. I'll see you in the next video. Let's make cinema quality video.